cataractcoach.com. Zonded or lost, noted during FACO. You're doing FACO chop, and you see the lens bag equator. Let's watch the case. I'm watching for the first time with you. So white cataract, and putting in an air bubble, and probably a little bit of tripan blue dye. There we go. I like that air bubble there. Let's use less tripan blue dye. And now viscoelastic fill. And let's see the main incision. All looks pretty good. And now here's the moment of truth. Start at the rectus. Oh, look how wrinkly and loose the capsular bag is. So the anterior lens capsule wrinkles like that. Now you know you're going to have some challenges. Now, why do you still um, get a nice rectus here? Why is that so easy? Well, the answer is the big nucleus is preventing the bag from collapsing. So this big nucleus is holding the bag in its correct position here. So nice looking rexus. So the rexus can be easy, but then even afterwards, you start doing FACO and like, whoa, after you take the lens material out of the bag, now the bag collapses. So getting out that liquefied lens cortex, more viscoelastic going in. Let's see a nice chop technique here. Obviously a very experienced surgeon, nice chop down the middle, further chopping here. And watch the rexus edge. As you do this, wow, look at the rexus edge moving so much. And as you take pieces out of the capsular bag, look what happens. Now the bag can collapse. So you get these pieces out of the capsular bag and you're gonna notice, look where the Rex is now. It's really moved a lot. So what should you do at this point? You need to stabilize the bag. So time for some capsule hooks, beautiful. These are actually capsule hooks, not iris hooks. You can see the orientation and the shape of them is a little bit different. Getting in two of these was gonna provide some good support in that one area. So that's a good move. Now let's see, and we're gonna do more chop here. Get that nucleus up. Hey, let me tell you about cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. So much more material than you'll find just here on YouTube. If you're a young doctor in training, have you downloaded that free PDF book yet? Have you gone through the free 25 part curriculum series? Come on, you wanna learn FACO, right? Now back to this case, taking out that lens material, and let's see here, capsule bag is being held up pretty nice. Those two hooks are providing pretty good support. So perhaps this is a traumatic cataract and there's a focal area of zinal loss instead of just global zinal laxity. And so as these material pieces come out, very important, prevent the bag from coming up too because the bag's extra loose, right? So here's where you want to keep the chopper in the safe position underneath those pieces with the smooth end of the chopper down. You may want to put more viscoelastic in the bag just as a barrier so when you take these pieces out, the bag doesn't come forwards. Well, it looks pretty stable. You may want to adjust your fluidics so you have a little bit higher infusion pressure too. That can help slow down your aspiration flow rate. And you say, what's that misty smoke? Do you know what that is? That's the fake of probe vibrating and, he, and aerosolizing the BSS that's on the surface of the eye. So again, taking out that last little piece here. Looks pretty good. Now I got to clean up the cortex. Here's where a bimanual setup can help a lot. You don't want to let the bag collapse too much either. And... Okay, CTR going in, so probably already put viscoelastic. Much easier to put this in with viscoelastic in the bag and getting that CTRR going around. I like to use a Sinsky hook to hold that leading eyelet as it goes around just to make sure. And that going, it's going pretty nicely. Let's see, there we go. There's the last loop of it, the last eyelet. And you can drop that in the bag, make sure it goes in the bag. So CTR is certainly gonna help, but now you can probably take out your caps or hooks but is the CTR going to be enough? And so here comes the lens. Let's see, it's a three-piece lens. Let's see how it's being placed. Need to set up the scope here a little bit. Um, okay, it looks like it's in the bag. Now the extra bolster effect is by placing the haptic where the area of zonal weakness is. That can help. But this lens may not stay centered when you take out all the viscoelastic. And then also you can see there may be some prolapse vitreous. So cleaning up, that may be vitreous instead of uh, cortex. Those little strands right there. Got to be very cautious here. Again, coming out of the eye lets it collapse. You don't want to do that. So let's go back in here. There's the vitrectomy being done. Again, now a little more triamcinolone can help stain that. I usually like a bimanual vitrectomy. I don't usually use coaxial. I really, I've never seen a retina surgeon use coaxial. That's why I figured the bimanual approach was probably better. So taking this out here, and then don't let the AC collapse. You may need to put something else to help support this. Maybe a capsular tension segment, suture to the sclera. Oh, maybe not. Well, let's see what happens long term. Hey, remember, new podcast every single week. The podcast is where we reveal all the secrets to ophthalmology. Check it out.